I have the pleasure of speaking today with Ray Panko, who used to be a St. Albert teacher, student counselor, and school administrator. We are truly fortunate to have Mr. Panko with us to share his insights of the history and education of St. Albert. Welcome and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure, Danielle. I'm interested in learning about what education was like in St. Albert. What did your classroom look like? Well, the classrooms uh, looked not appreciably different from what they are today. I mean, we had a space like we have, like we're sitting in now, and uh, we would have rows of desks and the students would sit in their desks and that would generally be the, uh, the space. There was very little moving around. Um, uh, if with permission, students would go to, and I emphasize with permission, students would be able to go and speak to another student, but other than that, they would sit in their desk and do their work. Approximately how many people were in one classroom? Well, in my very first um, uh, single grade classroom, I had 38 grade 8 students. After that, it varied. Uh, it went as low as perhaps uh, 25 or 22, and then somewhere in the, in the low 30s. But uh, that 38 was the highest number I ever had. Was there more than one grade level in the same room? For me, yes. In my very first uh, assignment, I was in Alcumdale, which is northwest of St. Albert, and I had grades 7, 8, and 9 in one classroom. Now that was a challenge, but it, it was all right. How would you manage to keep everyone on task? In the multiple grade classroom, it was actually quite simple. Uh, I would go to the grade sevens first thing in the morning and give them an assignment and do that very quickly and then go to grade eights and, and give them an assignment, something that they could work on on their own and do that very quickly. Then I would teach the grade nines a lesson. Uh, that would take some time, perhaps 15 or 20 minutes. And then I would give them an assignment, get back to grade sevens teach them a lesson, give them an assignment, and go on to grade eight. And that was my day, and it was actually quite busy. What was a typical school day like? Well, one of the things that we always did, and it was a, a regulation of the Department of Education, we had the very first thing in the morning and the very first thing in the afternoon, we had to take register. We had a register, which was a book of, of all the students' name and all of their attendance for every half day throughout the school year. That was to be the first thing we do. And then we would get on with our, um, our lessons of the day, uh, one subject after the other, and until uh, the day was over. What subjects did you teach? When I started teaching in 1959, and, and on for quite a number of years, for 10 or 15 years, teachers taught what needed to be taught. Uh, you taught all of the subjects. Uh, very few teachers exchanged uh, classrooms for subjects, although sometimes that happened. Um, my uh, specialty that, that I was educated in was, was actually science and also the fine arts, but that was simply one of the subjects throughout the day. So I taught mathematics, uh, language, uh, social studies, music at one point, and so on. What are some of the differences between teaching today and when you were teaching? One of the things that was different back then, of course, today uh, teachers uh, go for a four-year Bachelor of Education degree before they can even begin teaching. Uh, in my day, that was not necessary. In fact, it was um, a permission that was granted by the provincial government that uh, a person could go and begin a teaching career after two years of university education because there was such a shortage of teachers. And many teachers used to do that. They would go into the field of education after two years of, educa of, of uh, university education and then uh, complete their, their Bachelor of Education degree by evening classes and summer school. The equipment is different. Uh, for instance, I, I uh, carry around a Blackberry, and I'm sure that many students have smartphones with them. And so all that I had to deal with was um, perhaps students passing a, a written note from one student to the other. Today, I'm sure the teachers have to deal with uh, the students texting from one classroom to the other, or perhaps something uh, outside of the classroom. Uh, so equipment is different. Uh, computers didn't begin to uh, enter the, the, uh, the schools until the mid-1970s or the late 1970s. And even then they were a kind of an oddity and they were a subject to be studied and not uh, a piece of equipment to be used. Uh, our equipment was things like um, um, film projectors um, where we could show uh, uh, 16 millimeter films, uh, slide projectors, uh, film strip projectors, those kinds of things, record players. What grades did your school go up to? The one I attended uh, went from grade 1 to grade 12, and in the schools that I taught, uh, they ranged from uh, grade 1 through to grade 11 until uh, uh, grades um, 1 to 7. What percentage of the students would get their high school diploma? Well, of course, over my career that has varied. Um, when I went to school, 
I would expect that perhaps um, out of a class of about 25 that started with me in grade one, perhaps um, seven or eight would have graduated from grade 12. Um, and the percentage uh, would have been about the same when I began teaching, but of course when I ended my career in, in 1993, um, a much larger percentage of students than I would have finished grade 12. If a student disobeyed the rules, what were the consequences? Well, interesting, uh, um, Danielle, probably not a whole lot different from what it is today. I mean, they would lose privileges. Um, the privilege that probably hurt the most is loss of recess, uh, including a loss of, of, the, of the play period at, at noon hour. Uh, students who lived in town uh, would generally walk to school and so they could be kept in after school as well. I hear that they used to use the strap. Why was that an acceptable punishment? Well, the strap certainly was available in the school and it was used on occasion and I, and I have to emphasize on occasion. Um, it was not a regular form of the discipline, but the, um, uh, the threat, if I may use the word, was always there. Students always knew that if, if things got out of hand too badly, that the strap would have been a consequence and it was why was it used it was a societal thing it was actually a, a, an accepted uh, form of, of um, dealing with misbehavior in children um, quite often uh, uh, students who misbehaved at home would be spanked and so the strap was an, expen an extension of, of spanking was education important to your family as long as i can remember uh, my parents used to uh, uh, extol the virtues of education and in fact that I must get an education and must complete school. And, and you must remember that uh, growing up in, in the 1950s, um, jobs were plentiful, the economy was booming, um, oil had just been discovered, the uh, war was just over, so there were plenty of jobs. Uh, students could leave at the age of 15, and that was allowable in those days, could leave at the age of 15 and get a job in construction or in the oil field and, and make tons of money. And uh, so to choose an education was a, a bit unusual, actually. Was education important to society in general? Society in general were beginning to um, understand the values of an education. However, many individual students, uh, individual young people, as they do today, have a mind of their own. And uh, they would decide to simply leave school and, and get a job. And uh, that was life. In what ways did the education you receive help you pursue your career? Well, of course, I couldn't have gone to the university without uh, having finished my grade 12, and so that, uh, that certainly uh, was a factor there. I finished my grade 12 and then went on to the university and got my teacher education, and um, it, it's a part and parcel of my career. Do you think that you'd be a different person today if you attended one of our schools? Different person, Danielle? I, I don't think so. Uh, would I know different things? Would I be interested in different things? Probably. Um, I, I, in my day, I was probably considered a techie. I, I could uh, operate a 16-millimeter film projector and, and thread that film faster than a teacher. Um, today, I would probably be uh, interested in computers and, and smartphones and, and be quite good at those. Um, different person, probably not, but different interest, obviously, yes. Thank you for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you, Danielle.